uh, call to order the meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board. Eileen, if you could read the opening statement, please. Yes. Planning Board meeting March 7, 2019. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board to be open. Adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on January 4, 2019, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Star Ledger and the Tritown News. Second, on January 4, 2019, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 4, 2019, said notice was posted in the office of the planning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits, which are on your right at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you call the roll, please? Yes, I can. Mr. Boyle's been excused. Mr. Dorado? Here. Chief Kudrick? Here. I'm sorry, Mr. Husser? Here. Mr. Nicastro? Here. Mr. Schneider, I have not heard from. Mr. Tannenhaus is going to be late. Mr. Seaman? Here. Mr. Everett is excused. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Here. And Chairman Nash? Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and followed by uh, a moment of silence for our first responders and our troops both here and over abroad. Chief? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Approval of some minutes. Uh, we have the regular meeting of December 20th, 2018. Eligible voters are Chief Kundrick, Mr. Nicastro, and myself. So moved, Chairman. Chief, can you... Second, please. Yep, uh, I second. Okay. Chief Kudrick? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. And Chairman Nash? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is the minutes of the reorganization and regular meeting of January 3rd, 2019. Eligible voters are Mr. Dorado, Mr. Hooser, Chief Kundrick, Mr. Nicastro, Mr. Seaman. Uh, Deputy Mayor O'Donnell and myself. Can I have a motion, please? Motion to move. January 3rd. Second. Who was that? Mr. Uh, yeah. O'Donnell and, and Chief. Chief. Thank second. You. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Chief Kudrick? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Chairman Nash? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And the last one is uh, minutes of the regular meeting of January 17th, 2019. Eligible voters, Mr. Dorado, Mr. Huza, Chief Kundrick, Mr. Seaman, and myself. Anyone, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt the regular meeting for January 17th, 2019. Thank you, Chief. Second. I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Seaman. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Chief Kudrick? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. And Chairman Nash? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Move on to our new business. Uh, first application we have before in front of the board is case number SD2980, M&M &M and GNC Herculino. 
It's a minor subdivision application of M&M and GNC Ercolino as applicants and owners seeking minor subdivision approval to subdivide the property into three new lots for future two-story dwellings with the exception of the proposed lot 73.01 which would contain the existing two-story dwelling on premises known as block 185 lot 73 277 Colts Neck Road, which is County Route 35. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Todd Cohen. I'm the attorney for the applicant, the Ercolino. Um, as the chairman mentioned, this was originally submitted as a four lot major, uh, including a flag lot. But after meeting with your board professionals, um, my client elected to resubmit it as a three lot. Uh, minor subdivision. Uh, we have received uh, review letters from your engineer dated February 25th and your planner dated March 5th, which uh, referenced the updated plans and the minor subdivision. Uh, the only variances that are requested relate to the existing conditions on the property today. I have with me Mr. Charles Sermont, professional engineer on the project, when asked that he be Sworn and his qualifications placed on the record. Hey, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Charles Sermont, S U R M O N T E. Charles, could you put your professional educational qualifications on the record as an engineer, please? Certainly. Um, I received my engineering degree from Lehigh University in 1984. I've been uh, working in uh, surveying and engineering for the last 35 years, and I've been licensed as both an engineer and a surveyor since uh, the early 90s. And I have appeared this before this board, not so much recently, but over the past 20 years, I've probably been here a half dozen times. And your licenses uh, in the state of New Jersey are current with the New Jersey Professional Engineers Board? With Community Affairs, yes, the state board, yes. Yeah. And there's no action pending against you? Uh, no, there is not. Okay. Mr. Cohen will accept his qualifications as an expert in civil engineering. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chair, could you just briefly uh, describe the application before the board this evening? Sure. Uh, the subject property um, is on Colts Neck Road. It has 350 feet of frontage and 650 feet of depth. Uh, it's 5.2 acres. There is a single-family dwelling up at the uh, northern part of the property, pretty hard against Colts Neck Road. Uh, that's one of the variances we seek for an existing condition. Uh, that dwelling has a circular gravel driveway surrounding the home and a garage in the rear. Um, we propose to subdivide the three properties somewhat equally, uh, yeah, give or take a foot. Um, uh, each property having about 117 feet of frontage along uh, Colts Neck Road. Uh, we expect two homes to be constructed, um, likely disturbing maybe the first 150 to 180 feet of the property. We don't expect any need to disturb any areas beyond that uh, point so that the, the rear 450, 500 feet of, of all three lots uh, would remain undisturbed. Okay, you've had the opportunity to review the CME letter from February 25th, is that correct? Yes. And with regard to the discussion points in paragraph four, uh, the sub minor subdivision would be filed by uh, Platt, is that correct? Either way, but it's always best to file it by Platt. So if the board prefers to be filed by Platt, it's, it certainly will be. And there was a request for comment on the stormwater management for the property? Uh, we expect when we go for, for uh, plot plan review through your engineering department, um, we, we fully plan on proposing uh, stormwater management for at least the, uh, the dwellings themselves, probably uh, propose a dry well system that will uh, mitigate any, any runoff from the dwellings. 
Is there any intent to have future access from Maple Place or Magnolia Street to Paper Streets that abut the rear of the property? I, there is no plan to, and I find it highly unlikely that the possibility would ever exist that those two stubs would ever be developed by either property owner to the north or the south. Okay. But there is no intention. <clears throat> 4D um, is the need to provide monuments. Just before you move on to, to the next one, I know you said there's no anticipation to do that, but is there any objection to making that a condition of the approval? No, uh, there's not. Okay. Uh, with regard to the request for provide monuments per section 188, 127, the riparian buffer, um, your comment regarding that? We'll, we'll uh, install the monuments as required under the ordinance. Um, in your opinion, is there any need for improvements such as curbing, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sidewalk along Colts Neck Road? There are no sidewalks present along that stretch of Colts Neck Road. So um, we do have an application with the county. Unless the county mandates it, we were hoping this board would, uh, would not require it. Okay. And just to be clear, there's a, I think, a design waiver you're seeking from that requirement, correct? That's correct. With regard to the comments 5A through D, I believe the applicant is agreeable that those information can be provided. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, comment 5E, uh, this is based on uh, historical aerials. It appears a portion of the property uh, were historically agriculturally used. Um, in checking with my client, they purchased the property in 1979. Uh, it was in its present condition then. It's been over 40 years since they purchased it. Uh, there's been no farming uh, in that entire time, and from what they knew before, it was possibly a horse farm. So we would request that that requirement be waived um, based on the history of the property not being farmed. It's mainly wooded at this time. Um, Ms. Newman, you want to weigh in on that, given this uh, new information? Yeah, given the information submitted, I take no exception to that. Um, the board, although I don't think we ever got to the public hearing, but previously this was a major subdivision, which had more lots and had substantially more disturbance. And I think that that's where you're seeing this comment, as well as the following comment, which deals with the LOI and a flood hazard. There was more concerns that there was additional disturbance and it was getting closer to those lines. Um, but given the revised configuration, I don't take exception to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving along with regard to comment 5F, uh, Monmouth County Health Department will have to witness soil profiles. Is that correct? That's correct. We've, we've done preliminary borings to assure uh, suitability for septics, uh, but it would be premature to call the county out until we actually know where those septics are going to be located, as that would uh, be a requirement of theirs. With regard to item 5G... Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Cohen, just yes, before we get off that topic for a second, all right, um, we have something from the Monmouth County Board of Health that they, they're they saying they haven't witnessed any of the um, borings, all right? You're saying you've taken borings? We've taken borings. When we call the county out, we'll actually go out with a backhoe and do profile pits. Okay. But that the county wants to see those pits done in the bed location. And at this time, we really don't have final designs on either lot for the house, so we really don't know where the septic will be. But we fully intend on going through the Board of Health uh, review process and, and providing them uh, and the information they need. Mr. Cohen, if, if the Board did act favorably on this application, that would be a condition of the approval. Absolutely, and we do have the same March 4th letter that you're holding in your hand. Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, 5G, uh, again, this is requesting a phase one, possibly, uh, to demonstrate no well septic system underground storage tanks on the property. Again, with the history of the property since 1979 never being developed, we would also request a waiver of 5G. Uh, Ms. Newman, you want to weigh in on that one? 5G? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I really have no uh, exception to that. Uh, it's not an ordinance requirement that they're seeking relief from. It's a suggestion, but we don't have actually a requirement that a phase one be performed. And given the fact that the property has been undeveloped for a period of time, I don't have any issue with it. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, with regard to 5H, I would ask that uh, Chet, could you please address the requirement, uh, the request for 5H? Uh, yeah, 5H uh, deals with wetlands and flood hazard. Um, in 2005, we did receive a letter of interpretation from the state uh, that indicated neither wetlands nor buffers on the property at all. Uh, unfortunately, that um, letter uh, expired in 2015. Um, but again, given, given the fact that um, we're not proposing anything within 400 feet of our rear property line, it would be highly unlikely that, first of all, that the determination would change, and second, that we're doing anything that would, would come close to infringing upon either the wetland or the buffer. And the applicant is providing a 300-foot buffer that will be marked with the... Yeah, and as it relates to flood hazard, um, the Mingo Mahone is a Category 1, so it would have a 300-foot riparian buffer applied to it, and we are providing a conservation easement to that portion of our property that's within that 300-foot buffer, which would satisfy um, the state's concerns as far as flood hazard. So based on that, the applicant's requesting not to have to update um, the LOI, is that correct? That's correct, nor uh, seek verification from the state as to the line, the riparian buffer line. The uh, Minga Mahone has been surveyed. We know exactly where it is, so offsetting at 300 feet, we know exactly where that riparian buffer needs to be. And again, even the limit of that riparian buffer is 300 feet downgrade from any of our proposed activities. And the balance of the items in Section 5, you have no issue with as far as adding to the plan, is that correct? No. 5J through M. Yes, no, no objection. And Monmouth County Planning Board, um, obviously the applicant would have to get that as well then. Yes. I believe we've addressed the other outside agencies. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that pretty much concludes our presentation. If there's any questions of the engineer, obviously we'd be happy to answer them. Would have any questions? I just have one, I guess, Laura, for your expertise. I mean, uh, an LOI that's expired, four years expired, um, do, do you have any issues with that? I don't think we have any reason to believe that the line has changed. And what I would tell you is, um, if at that point there were no wetlands, because they are providing the 300-foot buffer from the center line of the stream, it should be subsumed within that. What we can ask is that the applicant submit. Uh, the DEP has GeoWeb information available, so perhaps just for comfort level, we can have that submitted. Um, and assuming that that does not show any wetlands that would infringe upon the property, then then no need to get the LOI. Mr. Cullen, I, I'm, I'm just curious about one thing. There's a considerable distance between what appears to be the limit of what you're going to disturb with the, with the two new homes and their, their uh, site development and the, the buffer area. Would the applicant be interested in extending the conservation easement um, further to the, which way is north here? Um, to the west. Further to the west. I think it's to the east. Um, well, I want to say. I'm not sure what the purpose would yeah. be. I mean, he's already providing a 300 foot buffer from. I, I understand, but I, if I heard the testimony before correctly, there's no interest in developing these lots beyond. And, and I'm not saying you have to go right up to the point where um, you're showing the limit of disturbance, but even if we got 100 feet, 200 feet more to the west,
board consider maybe an additional 50 feet? Whatever the applicant is willing to give us would be appreciated. 50 feet would, would be no problem. Okay. Ron, can you make that a condition? Yeah, so, approval, please? so how, what are the dimensions of the new buffer then with the additional 50 feet? It would be an additional 50 feet from the 300-foot the line that's already set on the plan. So 350 feet. We, we might make it a straight line that would approximate 350 feet. Rather than follow the contour of the brook, it might make sense to maybe be 340 somewhere and 360 somewhere else, but at least average 350 feet throughout the, from the, from the brook throughout the buffer. It's just cleaner if we make it a straight line. Okay. It's easier to write the courses of the deed. You're, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, with terms of the, um, Laura, the, you said the DEP uses um, GEO. Geo 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 Would that also show absence or presence? Oh, so what it does is it's a layer. It's an approximation. It doesn't serve as an LOI, but you can really look up any property on the DEP website, and it will show you Category 1 streams, regular streams, wetland limits. Um, it actually shows pretty substantial information. So it would show if they have any mapped wetlands in that area. The answer is yes. If it shows nothing, then it shows that there's nothing mapped in that area. Perfect. Thank you. Board have any more questions? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to clarify, um, we had had in our report about possible uh, street trees. I just want to see if the applicant would agree to providing at least one tree per lot. Sorry, Chair, we forgot about that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's very agreed. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that, Cherry. Okay, if the board doesn't have any questions, um, I will open this up to the public. If anyone would like to come up and ask the applicant and his engineer any questions about this application, please step forward. Uh, Mr. Chair, is it questions or questions and testimony at this point, if they'd like? Uh, well, I will do questions and testimony. I don't, th I don't think Mr. Cohen has any more witnesses. No. Nope. Yeah. All right. No one interested in speaking on this application? If so, I'll close the public portion of the application. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Cohen, would you like to uh, summarize? Um, very briefly, we just uh, request the uh, board grant the minor subdivision with the requested waivers uh, with the three conditions that we agreed to this evening. And also, Mr. Cohen, the, the variance is for the uh, existing non-compliant conditions. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. With that, can I have a motion? Certainly. I would make a motion uh, for a minor subdivision on case number SD2980 with the three conditions that have been agreed upon this evening through the testimony. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Cusa. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Husser? Yes. Chief Kudrick? Yes. Mr. Nicastro? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Ms. Uh, Chairman Nash? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, the next application in front of the board is case number SP1013, SL Homes, Inc. It is, um, we're, we're going only for preliminary, correct? Correct. It's for preliminary uh, site plan at Woodlands Management Plan. Pursuant to a stipul this stipulation, the application of SL Homes, Inc. as applicant and Salvino Savo, as owner, will seek pre preliminary site plan and woodland management approval to develop the property as a mixed-use retail shopping plaza with three commercial buildings, a shopping center, 
and two restaurant pad sites on premises known as Block 143, Lots 23 and 24, U.S. Highway 9, approximately 400 feet north of the intersection with Casino Drive. Mr. Chairman, just yes, before sir. we get started, and you, you touched upon it a little bit in your intro, but uh, just by, by way of housekeeping and so that it's clear why we're here, um, this applicant previously appeared before the board and was granted a preliminary approval. That approval was challenged in an action in Superior Court. The parties agreed and rather than litigate uh, the matter that they would just come back and represent the application. The plaintiffs agreed with that. Uh, the board didn't stand in the way. So the applicant is back pursuant to that settlement to represent the application. So nothing that happened previously uh, is binding here. The applicant has to represent its case. The only thing that we've done, and if there are no objections, all of the exhibits that were previously marked, we've marked once again with the same exhibit numbers for tonight so that they do not need to be reintroduced. They can certainly be referenced, but they do not need to be reintroduced. It would just be new exhibits uh, that did not exist before, but we're proceeding uh, anew here. So the applicant has to represent the application, make all their proofs uh, as if they have not done it before. And the public has the same rights to cross-examine and provide testimony. Thank you, Mr. Kuchero. Mm -hmm. Okay, Council. Nothing. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Jan Woters. I'm a partner in the firm of Bathgate, Wegner & Wolf in Lakewood. Can you hear me? And is this thing on? M Mr. Woters, and you represent the applicant tonight, correct? I'm representing the applicant. Okay, just also by way of housekeeping, Mr. Chair, since this does come back via litigation, I don't know whether other parties are represented by counsel still. So if there are other, any other attorneys here tonight representing interested parties, if you please come and uh, enter your appearance. It does not appear there are any other attorneys representing any other parties tonight, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Walters. Okay, thank you. Um, as you indicated, Mr. Chairman, this is application SP 1013, SL Homes, Inc. Uh, it's an application for preliminary site plan approval and with ancillary variances and, and uh, design waivers to develop property as a mixed-use retail shopping center with three separate buildings um, a one-story uh, square foot, 30,880 square foot multi-tenant retail, and two one-story pad sites, which uh, are right now proposed to be fast food restaurants. However, at this point, there is no leases or arrangements for those restaurants on those pad sites. It also um, If I could just to clarify, this is a shopping center, correct? Correct. Thank you. It also includes an application for 221 parking spaces. We're also applying tonight for Woodlands Management Plan approval as part of the preliminary approval process. The property consists of approximately 12.6 acres. Um, it's located on the easterly side of Highway 9, approximately 400 feet uh, north of the intersection of Casino Drive. It is in the highway development zone. Uh, all uses proposed under this application are permitted uses in the HD zone. The, by way of background, the property has been owned by the applicant SL Homes since 1985. It has not been in use during the time my client has owned it. Uh, it appears to have been maybe devoted to some form of agricultural use prior to that, but since his ownership, the property has not, not been developed or used whatsoever. Um, uh, the applicant and owner did um, obtain, prior to this time, a site plan approval for a 60,000 square foot building from uh, the planning board. Uh, that was a number of years ago, and that application, they never moved forward on that application. And that application has been done away with. Uh, as Mr. Cucciara indicated, we're here for a full rehearing of this application. As a result of the settlement and litigation, um, I might, for my first witness, I'd like to call William Stevens, the project engineer. Mr. Stevens, would you please state your name 
and by whom you're employed. My name is William Stevens. I am the Vice President of Professional Design Services and a professional engineer and planner licensed to practice here in the state of New Jersey. And I have appeared in front of this board on many occasions. I just need to swear you in first. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So, Mr. Stevens. Uh, Council, Mr. Stevens, uh, your licenses are current with the PE board? That is correct, yes. And there's no outstanding actions? There are none, yes, and I'm also a planner licensed here in the state of New Jersey as well. So are you qualifying him as both an engineer and a planner? Yes, I am. Okay. We'll accept his qualifications in both areas. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening. Uh, Mr. Stevens, uh, are you uh, uh, primarily responsible for the preparation of the plans of this application? Yes, I am the engineer responsible charge for this project. And are the plans that are submitted uh, as part of the application tonight substantially similar or almost exactly the same as the plans previously submitted on the prior application? They are. That is correct. Okay. Would you please start describe the site? So generally, as most of the voters described, it's basically a 12 and a half acre site located just to the north of Casino Drive along <laughs> State Highway Route 9. Currently, would you describe what's located at the site at, at this time? Right now, the site is, is vacant. There are the, a couple of foundations from some dilapidated structures which are proposed to be removed by this application, as well as a billboard which is also proposed to be removed should an approval be granted for this application. Is the site uh, wooded or uh, not wooded? The site is generally wooded. With what type of trees? Uh, it's a mixture of deciduous and evergreen trees. Okay. And we'll talk about that more with the buffer as we get later in the application. Yes. Um, so now would you please describe the project being proposed? So the applicant is proposing to construct a shopping center that will <coughs> consist of, of three buildings. Uh, the main building will be a, a two-story multi-tenant building. It's proposed right now to have 15 individual stores located within it, but of course they're designed to be flexible. Should someone desire more space, there would be less stores. The, there is a small mezzanine that, that comprises the second floor located above the center portion of the building. The total area of the building is 30,880 square feet. There are also two pad sites proposed to be located in, in front of that main building in between that building and Route 9 that are currently designed to be fast food restaurants. Uh, would you describe the stormwater management uh, program for the site? Yes, yeah, so what we've done to provide for stormwater management for this site is to design a series of inlets and pipes that will capture the stormwater from the buildings and from the proposed parking area and collect them in that system for ultimate disposition to a series of detention basins located along the southern developable border of the property where the water will be detained and infiltrated for the lower water quality storms before being discharged out to the, the bed of the Manasquan River. And uh, now that you mentioned the Manasquan River, why don't you describe for the board the wetlands that exist on the property and their location and the proximity of the project to the wetlands? So th there are wetlands located along the main stem of the Manasquan River, and there is also a tributary to the Manasquan River that runs out of the villages located to the east of the developed portion of our site. So basically along our eastern boundary and our southern boundary, there are waterways that are regulated by the state of New Jersey and have flood hazard areas associated with them. And have you delineated the wetlands areas? We, we did delineate the wetlands and we received a LOI from the state of New Jersey. And that LOI has been submitted to the planning board uh, and is one of the um, uh, exhibits to this application, is that correct? It is, that is correct, yes. And what does basically the LOI provide? So the LOI tells us, gives us confirmation of the line that we delineated, that it's accurate and can be relied upon for five years from the date of issuance of the LOI. It is a currently a valid LOI. And it also tells us what the buffer to those wetlands would be by classifying what type of wetlands they are. 
the DEP classifies these wetlands as intermediate resource value, and they would have a 50-foot buffer associated with the wetlands. And what buffer have you established for the, for the wetlands? We, we have far in excess of a 50-foot buffer because all of that falls within the riparian buffer from both the tributary to the Manasquan River and the riparian buffer for the main stem of the Manasquan River. And what's the size of that buffer? So those buffers are 150 feet from the top of banks of both stream corridors. Okay. <clears throat> uh, would you describe the flood zone requirements for this property? So what we were required to do was to go and get a flood hazard area determination for this project that was required by your professionals in the past. So we did do that. We went to the DEP. We received that determination, and it was determined that the, the, the flood hazard line that we show on our plans is accurate and can be relied upon, generally at elevation 71. And also determined that the riparian buffer that's shown on our plans of 150 feet is also accurate and can be relied upon. And further, that since our project is located outside of those riparian areas, that no individual flood hazard area permit is required. Okay. <clears throat> so the DEP has advised you based on that that there's no flood hazard area permit that that's required. That would be correct, yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you this to um, read into the record, if you will. This is an email from Qinghua Liang from the DEP, dated March 5th, addressed to you, uh, dealing Just with the before question you, before, of, before you do that, Eileen, yes. is, do we have that, or, or is this new? This is new. All right, so. This is going to be. We'll mark this as A39. Yes. And what's the date of the email? March 5th. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So if you would read that, please. So re regarding this project, I just sought clarification from her. She is one of the reviewing agents at Flood Hazard Area for the DEP. Confirmation that all the things I just said to you are correct. She writes back to me, based upon the plans, we prepared these drawings. It appears that all the proposed activities are located outside of the regulatory flood hazard area and the riparian zone. Therefore, it is advised that an application for a formal flood hazard permit is not necessary. Please be advised that this assumption that the location of the regulated flood hazard areas and riparian zones, as depicted on the above reference plan, matches the location shown in the plans that were approved originally by flood hazard area, and, and it does. Okay. And I believe that this uh, your, this, uh, the information that contained this email was also confirmed by um, Laura. You confirm that with? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Just I can confirm that my. Just, just oh. hold on for one second, um, Eileen. Yes. Can Mr. the record show that Mr. Tannen has has just arrived for the meeting? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Laura. So, Mr. Chairman, I can confirm my office also reached out to the DEP so that this issue can be resolved, and we did confirm that, in fact, the flood hazard permit is not required. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Mr. Stevens. Now, with regard to um, endangered species and environmental impact, did you have a, a study caused to be made for both uh, endangered species and environmental impact, and by uh, Du Bois environmental uh, consultants. Yes, that is correct. And based on the, the uh, environmental impact review and endangered species study by Du Bois environmental consultants, which, for the board's reference, has been submitted, both uh, our exhibits previously submitted to the board, um, as uh, I have a dull mark, but A20 a, from the original application. A20, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Um, would you briefly summarize the conclusions of Du Bois consultants as to the environmental impact and endangered species uh, concerns regarding this site? Yes. The they went through all, all of the requirements for the endangered species study on the subject property and, 
at the very conclusion of their report, which has been submitted into, into evidence, it, it does say that it is their determination that the project will not have any irreversible, adverse, or detrimental impacts to the bald eagle or the bobcat, which were two of the species that were listed as being of concern. And the project site should not be constrained by the presence of, of rank four landscape project mapping, which has to do with the NJDEP GeoWeb information. It is the opinion of the DEC that the project is in conformance with the threatened and endangered species standards of the Howell Township Ordinance. That was their conclusion. Um, Mr. Walt, Mr. Kluzer has no, the yeah. Environmental Commission seen that? Yes. Would you like to weigh in on that? No, no comment. We, we were fine with it. You are okay with yes. that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Stevens, uh, did, have you had a chance to review and are you familiar with CME's um, planning review letter number one, dated March 1st, 2019? I have, and I am. Okay. So let's take a look at CME's letter. Um, in paragraph four, um, or section four, they deal with and raise a question as to variances and waivers that are part of this plan. And uh, this application includes a request for a variance as it regards to the 50-foot buffer and also includes two design waivers. Let's take the one at a time, and let's talk about the... You're referring to the planning review. I'm referring to the planning review. Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay. So, reviewing, referring to what the ordinance requires for the buffer and what we're proposing and why. So, as the board may recall, during our prior preliminary approval, we, we had requested and were granted a variance for the 50-foot perimeter buffer that is proposed to be constructed between our project and the village's project. My idea at that time was to try to retain the existing vegetation and, and supplement that with additional landscaping. That's what I wanted to do, what I thought was the right answer. And uh, the board ultimately approved that. However, since that time and because of the litigation that ensued, there were meetings held with the villages and other represent representatives as well as your own professionals discussing this buffer and at that time we came to a conclusion that we would make some changes to the plan in this area so what we are now proposing is to remove the majority of the trees that are located within that 50-foot buffer with the exception of two specimen trees which are to remain before you go any further I think it's important to note what kind of trees are being removed so Are these good trees, the scrub trees, junk? So, so generally what, what was done at the request of, of, the, of the neighbor was we went out and we flagged our clearing limits so you could clearly see them in the woods. We flagged where this 50 feet is going to be so you could see that too. And when we all started to review it, we realized that the trees that were contained in that 50 feet were not going to provide an adequate four-season buffer. So that the idea to create a real formal buffer here was going to be the better idea. And it was what was agreed to by everyone, and I believe, I'll let the lawyers talk about that, but I believe was part of why the, the lawsuit was settled. Well, so, we are not going to determine why the yeah. lawsuit was settled. The lawsuit well, was settled because none of the parties wanted to litigate it. <laughs> okay. So, let, let's, let's just <laughs> stick to what, what, what you're proposing now. So, so what we're proposing now is to remove the vegetation that's located within that 50 feet, save for retaining two specimen trees that are located at both the east and west ends of that buffer, and then to construct a low, a low berm, approximately two or three feet in height, and to plant that with substantial plantings, as well as to provide a fence on our side of the buffer along the parking lot, the prior plan, the original plan that was approved, we had had the required 10-foot fence located along the village's side of the buffer. So this I, I think we, we, we can just stick to what you're proposing yeah. with regard to this application. This is, this is applications being presented anew. I'm just trying to explain the change, Mr. Cucieri, but I appreciate I, that. Yeah. Thank you. 
So, so that is what's being proposed. We're proposing to build a six-foot fence on our side of the buffer along the parking lot to create a berm that's two or three feet high, depending upon where you measure it from, to save those two existing specimen trees, and then to provide a, peri a perimeter screening that would be a formal screening to prevent a four-season screening to the villages. Um, Sherry, have you reviewed this? Um, yeah, I, I reviewed it. Um, it is definitely just, you know, a full clearing with the buffer, you know, the berm and the same, it's just a single species that runs across the berm. Um, you know, previous, previous plants had the trees plus a, more trees than they're proposing, but um, this is, I think, what the, you know, this is what they're proposing, the double row of cedar trees. So do you think that this is going to provide an effective screening buffer? I mean, they have a fence, a privacy fence. I'm talking fence to my expert, okay? I'm sorry, go ahead, Sherry. There's a berm plus, you know, a double row of evergreens with a privacy fence, so it, it is a buffer, yes. Sherry, what kind of evergreens are these? Are these Leland, are these cypress, uh, and how long and how big before they're, they're going to mature? Tree. They're red cedar trees, so they are smaller. They're not the type, they're not like a Norway spruce tree, which gets really tall. Um, they are, you know, more deer resistant. Um, you know, we certainly could have them mix up the species um, and provide trees that are a little bit taller than cedars can get. But is the concern with the evergreens for the deer eating? Uh, yeah, but we could do. But you could mix we it with something add in else. Other species too. Yeah. Looks like the the red cedars are getting installed at eight foot. They're eight right. They're just they don't become as tall as like what a Norway spruce tree would, you know, get to. Let me just ask the applicant, would you be willing to, Mr. Stevens, would you be willing to work with our um, certified tree expert to develop a, a buffer that she feels is, is more substantial, that would create the uh, more of a screening effect with the type of species that she's looking for? C certainly, certainly was our intention, Mr. Chairman. I had thought this had been reviewed by both of our offices. Been, this buffer has been talked about for a very long time, going through the process we've been going through. We do show different species, but if, if the board would like to see some other species, then the, the applicant certainly would be willing to do that. It's, it's our intention. We're trying to provide something that's going to be nice here. And the idea is to have the, the vegetation on the village's side of this buffer and then the fence on our side so that the, the beauty of this whole thing is going to going to go to the village's side. I understand that. It's, that's our intention, yes. I understand that. So then, again, yes. if the board was to act, favorably act on this, a condition of the approval would be that uh, you, your engineer will work with our certified tree expert to develop a buffer that she feels is acceptable. Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure, but as far as the, the mix of the buffer, yes. Okay. Uh, are we still agreeing on the, the two-foot berm and the six-foot fence? Um, yeah, if yes. I, yes. I mean, that's relief that's associated with the board, and I think you, you kind of got a sense for they don't have an issue with that. It okay. is relief that's required with your application. Right. And Shari spoke to there should be differences in species, which I believe, Mr. Chairman, they can work out. They're here for preliminary tonight, so if the board were to act favorably, the board would then be able to see what that finalized buffer looks like prior to acting on yeah, final. It's mm -hmm. Absolutely, we would be willing to do that. So. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Um, that covers the buffer. Uh, we're also, re the applicant is requesting two design waivers. Would you please discuss the design waivers? Yes, the, the first design waiver that we're looking for is that your ordinance asks for landscaping between the parking areas and, and, the, and the main building is, is where the issue is. What, what we are requesting for a waiver is that we don't provide formal planting beds in front of the building, that we provide a series of planters instead of providing the, the planting beds. And, and the reason being that when, when we have stores like this and there, there's so many doors, it, it just isn't convenient to have plant, you know, planting beds in front of the building. It's, it becomes something that is, in my opinion, a tripping hazard. 
and a, and a nuisance collector. I, I think that elevated planters would be a far superior design for the front of this, and, and that is what we would request a waiver for. And then in lieu of the other design waiver? The, the second design waiver we're seeking is in, is in regard to your wood waste management ordinance. We, we are asking to be able to make a contribution in, in lieu of having to plant all of the required trees. We are getting credit for 160 trees as part of our woodlands management approval for the trees we're planting. That doesn't mean we're only planting 160. It means we're getting credit for 160. But for those that we're not getting credit for, we're seeking a waiver to be able to pay into the fund. And how many trees would be required So I believe your forester and my forester were still going over this as late as today, but by my, my calculations as the engineer, I went over the numbers, which I believe Shari was looking at. She can correct me if I'm right, wrong, or indifferent, but I believe that what we're looking at is we have a requirement for somewhere around 261 trees that we have to pay into the fund for. Right, that's on top of the 160. Correct. They're just not getting credit for the street trees running along nine. The rest of it they're getting credit for. Well, I guess then the other way to ask the question is how many trees are they asking to make a contribution for rather than 261. planting? 261? Yeah. Okay. 261. That, that is correct. That's the number that I currently have on the drawings, uh, not that were submitted to the board. Shari had asked for some changes to the plan. I had worked with my forester in my office to make these changes, I had sent them to her to look at. That's what I believe the number is, but I haven't heard from her that she agrees. Yeah, so, um, so the 261 trees is $78,300. So that would be their contribution to the tree fund. So you, you agree with the 261? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's your answer. Thank okay. you. <laughs> That's what I was okay. wondering. I hadn't had a chance to talk to her myself. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just, before we move on for here, all right, um, the, the the planters in front of the stores, I just want to poll the board and, and see, because that could be. Uh, Mr. Kuzer, do you have any opinion as to the issue about um, giving them the ability to do above grade planters uh, rather than in ground planting? Not at all. No objection to granting <clears throat> no. the variance. Mr. Uh, Tanner House? Mr. Chairman, I actually think it would be a uh, positive thing for the project and the reason that I do is the way that the parking is set up Pilma could either back into a building yeah or or run into a sidewalk and I think right. the planters could be part of the bollard it, if I could though building. there's no parking against a building here and where there is no, they I, do provide bollards no, I just want to no, I know that there's that. no parking against it but the way it's situated they could still continue to back into the building I think the planters would provide additional uh, safety. If I may, too, I mean, I'm just looking at this building, kind of the Walmart setup we have, where there's no parking mm -hmm. against Walmart either, mm -hmm. but there's bollards that exactly. go along that. Mm -hmm. So that's we had to get the, so, we had to get the B word in. So, yeah, <laughs> Walmart <laughs> falls out here. So I think it would be I think it would it was, be a, it was a positive on my list. thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> was I, I would like to to see what that design would look like mm. if we act favorably in a final design, and mm -hmm. I'll see how that's, maybe there's an elevation that could be provided. Sure. Mr. Castro? You stole my thunder, but that's what I want to see. I want to see a drawing before I can make a final determination. Okay. Ms. Um, I'm fine with it with elevation and ballards. Chief? Uh, I'm fine with the elevation, and depending on how, you know, the size of these planters, it could actually replace the ballards, I think, depending, mm -hmm. instead yeah. of having both. Well, just my opinion. Okay, I think it's going to be a mix. <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, yeah. Just my opinion. Let, let the engineer yeah. make. It just starts getting too busy when you start including a lot Mr. of things. Mr. Durano, I'm fine. You're fine with it, <clears throat> Mr. Seaman? Go with it. Again, I, I think seeing the elevation is going to make <clears throat> the biggest difference. Okay, so there's your guidance. M Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, just to, to put out there, they are only asking for preliminary. Mm -hmm. We could just table that allow them to depict what they want when they, if there's an approval for preliminary when they come back for final so that you actually see 
what they're talking about and then be able to make a decision based upon, you know, something visual at that time. Right, and, and I think that's what we were doing here, Mr. Concero, okay. is we're giving him guidance as to what the board would like to see. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Stevens, uh, the, the last design waiver, um, section 18188-22, light intensity, would you please mm -hmm. discuss what you're looking for? A response to that request? So, so what your planner had, had picked out is that the intensity of the lighting that we're proposing for the shopping center is, is above what is permitted by your ordinance. Uh, what is statement in here is that you allow an average maximum of 0 0.5 foot candles. Uh, it's always been my experience as an engineer in the past that we wanted 0 0.5 foot candles as a minimum. So we have more lighting than that on our plan. We have right now by our calculations, our area calculations, a 1.4 foot candle average. That's what we show. Uh, we can reduce it. If that's what the board would prefer us to do, we can reduce it down to 0 0.5. Mr. Tannenhaus. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was coming. I, I can make a couple of, of suggestions. Uh, first one would be provide some guidance and some evidence of what the IES standards would ask for and provide that in your testimony. If we act favorably and you come back for your final, we can discuss it at that point. The other thing that I would recommend is, is this going to be a 24, is any of the buildings proposed on this site going to be a 24-7 facility? Or is it going to be more, more of a retail? I, I, I don't think it's a, a plan to do that at this point in time. Okay. It wasn't envisioned in the original concept. I'd, I'd, also, I'd also like to hear some testimony as to how your, your lighting control scheme is meeting the ener latest New Jersey Energy Code requirements. Okay. I don't believe that having a photo sensor that just turns lights on dawn to dusk, I'm sorry, dusk to dawn, will be adequate. Some uh, reduction of lighting after, say, 10 p.m. may be warranted. And one of the reasons, and, and I think that's a great point, and we will address that in um, the final. One of the reasons we're asking for preliminary now is because, as um, Mr. Nash pointed out previously, we're, we're only looking for preliminary approval in, for the, the three retail buildings. We have two pads, right. um, which have yet to have tenants identified for. Once they're identified, that could dramatically affect some of um, the lighting, for example, the lo location of the, the plantings. So uh, that really is a, is a final approval presentation. Uh, Fair enough. We'll address that. Fair enough. With, with, with saying that, um, you know, there's no tenants as of yet. Correct. Known, um, but then the intent was not to have 24-hour operations. Um, I mean, there, there could be, there couldn't be. There, there could be, but I don't think they were thinking in terms of 24-hour operations for those kind of... Yeah, I mean, with today's technology, you can do dimming now yeah. very easily. We can put motion sensors in. Uh, there's, there's, there's various ways of handling and making sure that the lighting is at a bare minimum, considering that there is residence right next to the property. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, I'm looking at your, um, your lighting plan, and um, i got to tell you, my eyes aren't calibrated to microscopic numbers here, right? Uh, on the point-by-point -point grid, um, it, it seems that you're using the edge of the parking lot as a cutoff. Um, is there light spillage beyond your property? And if you can read those numbers, you're better than me. Well, no, actually, the, the, the grid does go out to the edge, to the edge of our, our property or, or to zero. So, so, no, there is no light spillage beyond our property. <clears throat> okay. But, but lighting, a, you know, still from a shopping center does cause nuisances, as Mr. Tannenhaus was saying, that the idea is to tone things down when it's not needed to security levels. And uh, we would certainly agree to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm also concerned about um, the visual glare. Um, at night, I mean, the prime example is, is automobile lights, uh, parking lots, 
all right? They're, they're so intensely lit that it tends to divert your eye. Obviously, we don't have that situation here, all right? But I like to try to make sure that we minimize how much you go past your property line, and you're saying that there's nothing. No. Okay. The second question is um, your in ingress and egress point, all right? Um, again, because I can't read these numbers, what's the illumination levels there? Because that's the point that I would think that we want to have a little bit higher illumination. So, so we're looking at our property line somewhere around 0 0.2, something like that, foot candles? Which is the DOT minimum um, for roadway lighting, I think, is 0.2 average maintained? Or is it 0.5 average maintained? So, so the DOT standards get a bit confusing because what they try to do is they try to light intersections and other points of uh, navigation curves in the road, th things like that. So, so for an entrance, I mean, we, we, we could certainly could add lighting there, and I don't disagree that it's a, it's a bad idea. We, we could. All right, would you please go back and look at that? Our, our lighting is more significantly pointed towards the shopping center itself, so they're basically on the returns coming into the center, but we could put something further out or closer to Route 9 to light that driveway further. All right, please. We could do that. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Tannenhouse. Uh, building off of that theme, the, there's a note that talks about having uh, shields along all of the poles that are around the property perimeter. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with that uh, requirement, but they're also providing shields, house side shields, for those that are facing Route 9. I'd Maybe like to leave it up to the chief. He'd like to see a little bit more light on Route 9 if we could. That'd be fine. I think, think removing of the house shields on nine would make. We we could take idea. those down. Yep. Would it reach the pleasure of the board? <clears throat> well, I think it's something you can look at between now and yeah. final, and you can independently communicate with the police department or or whoever else. Thank you, um, Mr. Stevens. <clears throat> going back to CME's letter, uh, CME had raised several issues that should be addressed. One is the southern and eastern ends of the property include a branch of the Manasquan River. They would like you to address the measures taken to protect the riparian corridor and the stream. So what, what we have done in accordance with your ordinance is to provide the required stream buffer, the 150 foot riparian buffer from the top of bank of both regulated waterways and, and also to, to provide monumentation along that line so that nothing will ever be disturbed. It's, it's our intention that the development will stop at that line. Okay. The next point that uh, CME raised is that uh, no architectural drawings were provided. Uh, the applicant should provide testimony addressing the non-residential architectural design standards. Uh, of the ordinance. So, so our architectural drawings have been submitted in support of this application. They, they are part of the exhibits. They were not changed in any way during any of the time. So the architecturals that were approved at preliminary are the same architecturals that are being presented this evening. They are part of our exhibits. I do have them on our exhibit board. Yes, A12. A12. Yes. Would the board like to, can you Laura does have them. There, I'm sorry. Oh, you want me to put them up? Yeah, would you? You could show them. Just. Are they under meeting exhibits? Yes. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's just one series of drawings. No, they're not listed like that. I just gave her one, one block of drawings. Oh, so I had it up. You did have it, yeah. <clears throat> if you just scroll through them somewhere in there, you'll find the architectural plans. I'm presuming you're not bringing an architect as one of your witnesses. At the point that we are going to finalize there the architecture as one. Yes. But not tonight. Not tonight. These one more, please. There you go. 
So these are the architecturals that were submitted in support of the original application, and they remain unchanged for this application. It is, it is the same the same building the board has previously seen. So here's my issue, all right. In this rendering that you have right now, the aisles, the circulation aisles, if you can go back to that, please, are back one. They're perpendicular to the buildings, all right. On your plan that I have in front of us, the aisles are parallel to the building, all right? Now, you well know from a planning perspective, all right, the aisles perpendicular are much better because it funnels the pedestrians into a path to the building rather than having them randomly step out between park cars. Did you care to address that? So the, the the job has been has been laid out based upon the constraints of the site. This the site being what it is, the, the parking just simply lays out better in the other direction. And and as opposed to a site where we're looking at something that was going to be a grocery store or something that has um, carts that need to be pushed back and forth. This this is meant to be a small neighborhood shopping center. It's what it's intended to be. So we, we have not changed the design of the parking from one to the other, although I will apologize that my architect has the drawing going in the wrong direction. Um, how do you, do you, do you meet the number of parking spaces, re obviously you meet the number of spaces required by ordinance. Are you, do you have excess number of parking spaces? We are required to have 211 spaces, and we have 221, including eight handicapped spaces. I would like you to consider eliminating a couple of spaces periodically and providing a pedestrian crossing so that I mean, if, if a person wants to step out of their car and, and walk between cars to get to the front of a building, we're not going to stop that. I understand that. But at least it gives the people a psychological crosswalk that they can look at and say, maybe I'll cross here. It might make it a little bit safer. And if you're, if you're a little bit over in the number of parking spaces, we have a little bit of room to play with. That would be striped crosswalks, yes. Mr. Chairman, we would agree, and I think that is a good idea. And in finalizing the drawings, we'd be happy to do that, and we'll, we'll do the same thing with determining where the planters would go. Then we'll set the whole thing up so that it's, it tends to funnel people to more defined areas. Fine, excellent. So it's, it's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, quick question. Sure. For the applicant, thank you. Um, so, with respect to the uh, the southern building, uh, from what I understand, you're not sure what type of tenants you're going to have at this point. The southern pad site. Um, my question is, if it's a a tenant that um, is of the type that attracts pedestrian traffic, I was wondering if you could consider um, what type of routes the pedestrians might take and some striping or other indicators to provide safe passage. Yes, yeah, yes, I mean, we, we would do that. That, that. Not only is that possible, but that was, that whole concept was one of the reasons why we're only getting a, asking for a preliminary as opposed to a final, because once we identify the tenants on those pad sites, that, that is then going to create the need to revisit. Um, no, I, I think that's where he was going with it, though, yeah, Mr. Right. Wilder, is that yeah. between now and final, that just keep that in mind. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can I also make a comment, just to, to piggyback on him, was where the double hours are in front of that s southern proposed fast food restaurant, where the double hours are for the main entranceway, there is a concrete walkway just to the north, where it says 270.55. I would, I would suggest putting in a crosswalk right there going over to that southern a fast food establishment. Do you follow me? So if people are walking, if people park along uh, those parking spots there in the middle and they 
and they traverse along that that concrete walkway going over to that fast food restaurant just continue the the crosswalk off of that walkway are you following me yes you're talking about the walkway we have going down the center of the parking correct where it says 270.55 right next to the double arrows continue that i would say continue across. right Right, put a put a pedestrian crosswalk right there. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, Chief. I think maybe a better answer would be to move it slightly to to the west and line it up with the walkway we do have going into the fast food restaurant. That's fine. I mean, so maybe we'll do something more like that because right. that would be a safer move than having people come through the middle of the parking right. lot. No, it's very very good thought. Yes. So when we're on the topic of that, um, the throat of the parking lot from the egress um, generally is it a good planning practice and good engineering practice to have a length where there is no conflict with not so much entering traffic but with exiting traffic and um, I was over by the Route 9 um, entrance yes thank you um, I'm, I'm a little concerned that you have a lot of activity that's in very close proximity to the ingress-egress point because of that four-way intersection. I understand the fast food is technically uh, entrance only um, and that the other to the north side is traffic coming out only, but you know, I, I see a lot of conflict. Could we talk about something like uh, extending a small island between the ingress and the egress movement so that we have a little bit more control? We don't have people crossing over from the shopping center area to the, to the pad area. Mr. Chairman, I mean, is that southern entrance even needed? The, you can, they can still access that southern pad if they go further on into the site and come in in their western uh, easterly entrance. So well, then you would have to you would have to reverse the flow to the north side of the um, the fast food. I would I would agree with you, and I would prefer to see that. But I will ask the applicant to either comment it on or think about it. Well, Mr. Chairman, I certainly understand what you're saying. I, I, I do get it. We had intended, as you had said, that those movements, those first movements in that throat that we're discussing would be a right in only and a right out only for the, for the northern driveway. So they're not made to be two-way. Two-way traffic doesn't come in until we come up to the next, the next intersection in the parking lot. How many cars could you queue there if somebody was was traversing into the right how many cars could you queue before you started to back up onto route 9 queue coming coming in you got somebody coming the problem is you've got somebody coming let's say in that southern entrance right there lord you just i'll just stand up no, I, I understand. You're, out, you're asking how many cars could queue if people stopped there yeah you you got people coming in through here, trying to get into the site, to this part of the site, you've got somebody backing up, so this person has to wait for the people to back up out of the parking spot, which causes all of these people to start to back up. How many cars could you queue? I think you're going to start to end up with people on Route 9 in a very unsafe situation. And you may even have a similar situation over here where people are trying to back out and people are trying to make a left-hand turn no, to the side. You it's only it's right out. Right, right, it's it's one-way traffic coming out. So, Never mind. so, so no, I understand yes, what you're saying, and I think that's really what the chairman was driving at also. So, so what, what I would say is, why don't we do this? Let, let's wait until we have a, a client who is identified here because all of these PAD users have very specific requirements. And then if we can reverse the flow or, or figure out a better way to close that <coughs> throat, that incoming throat, we'll, we'll do it. Fine. We'll try. Fine. And at any rate, it's going to come back to you for final review, and you could tell me I have to do something else. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's move on. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I think we're done with the CME planning letter, so we're going to move on now to the CME engineering review letter. 
Yeah. Okay. And specifically, we're going to be starting on page four um, because we've discussed everything up to that point. Um, the first item that CME mentions is compliance with Western Monmouth Development Plan. So you want to comment about that? Yeah, so we, we had discussed this at length in the past. This talks about trying to have interconnections between adjoining sites, and it's been made clear to us that our neighbors do not want an interconnection with us. We only have the ability to interconnect with the villages. That would be our only site that we could have an interconnection with. But in, in addition to that, what had been discussed during the preliminary hearings was providing a sidewalk along Route 9 for our entire project frontage, and we had agreed to do that. That is shown on our drawings. However, it is important to note that it does stop short of our southern property boundary because of the riparian buffer. Our approval from the DEP states that we will not disturb the riparian buffer. So that is what we're proposing, to build a sidewalk along our entire frontage from the north to the riparian buffer of the, of the Manasquan River. So the sidewalk's going to, on the north end, is going to be behind the guide rail? That is correct, yes. Okay. Right on our property lines where we propose it. But no sidewalk leading into the village's development for pedestrian traffic to visit? No. Hmm. But apparently, he's testifying that the villages would prefer not to have Right, that. that's surprising. And this came from who in the villages? The board. Well, it's my understanding the board never formally agreed on anything. I mean, well, there was there was a meeting in the field. There was some discussion. Right, this was a meeting in the field, going over the plans. So, so I wouldn't so represent that. You know what's on what was on the I mean, the mind of the villages. Okay. You know, with that. But that that it was your intent to. You know, to address what you believe their concerns were. <laughs> what does our ordinance require? How far does the, uh, to, the, to the property line of the villages? Yeah, our ordinance would just require sidewalk along the frontage. So that would extend all the way to that riparian buffer. And that's what, that's essentially they have the, the sidewalk totally along their frontage with the exception of along the southerly boundary where it hits the riparian area. What about to the north? It extends to the property line. And um, maybe it cuts off, but block 14306, lot 25, that's the village's lot? Yes. And how far? No, the other way, going north. Oh, that, all right. that's that, it. that cuts off. But if I recall, there were some conversations, I think, within the township that when they were going to redo Wyckoff, new sidewalks were going in. So. We should check to see if there was plans to put sidewalks past this property uh, line. And more important, if sidewalks are coming down Wyckoff, and then there's a small break between Wyckoff and this project, that just seems ludicrous that we're, we're not connecting. Right, that's what I think Jim Herman was going to. So, that should be looked into. That is being looked at at this point, or am I incorrect? Okay, well, the better question is, can we look into that? Yeah, sure. yeah, if there's a plan. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I, you were asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my point, I'm sorry, yeah, my point was that it, it seemed somewhat ridiculous, and if, um, and if it's within our purview, bless you, to do so, then and now's the time to do so. Okay, so I'll, I'll check into, into it and, and, uh, and let us know. Thank you. Okay, we're good. So. Okay. Um, well, the next point that CME made, um, uh, the property consists of several lots. As part of this process, the applicant will consolidate the property into uh, one parcel, and they'll do the consolidation by a deed, which will be submitted to the uh, board attorney township engineer for their approval prior to, prior to the recording of the deed. Um, 
in paragraph five. Uh, I, I don't want to skip over that too, too quickly because I'm finding everybody tells me that and then I get to pre-construction meetings in the town and it's not done. So also in this particular case, DOT is going to require it. Sure. So I just want it on the record. They've acknowledged it and we're not going to be at a pre-con and I'm going to hear Mr. Savino or his predecessor say, we didn't get there yet. Uh, we normally do that as part of resolution compliance when we get final and so, yeah. Um, that paragraph five has some uh, technical comments. Do we agree that uh, you're going to follow the technical comments and make changes as appropriate? Yeah, yes, we do. Okay. Uh, there, there is one other change to these drawings from the drawings that were previously approved that I just wanted to make the board aware of and, and the township engineers aware of, that since the time that we've been waiting, New Jersey American Water Company has now extended the sewer that we were proposing to connect to. So there now is gravity water, or is gravity sewer and municipal water in front of the site that we'll be connecting to. So we will be eliminating the pump station we were previously proposing to build. That is a change to these drawings. Are you still going to have an irrigation well? Yes. Uh, Mr. Stevens, would you comment on the outside agency approvals and the status of those and what are required? I'd be happy to. Uh, we, we are in the process of obtaining the outside agencies that are listed and, and some of which that we have. Um, start, starting from the top, Monmouth County Planning Board. We do have comments from Monmouth County Planning Board, which we need to resolve. Uh, there, there is nothing in their review that we don't believe that we can address. The reason why it has not been addressed in the, in the time that we have been waiting, the applicant was concerned with the litigation that was pending. Monmouth County Planning Board had asked him to relinquish his prior approvals for this property in exchange for getting this approval. And until he was sure of where this litigation was going, he was reluctant to do so. But I believe now we are in a position to finish our Monmouth County Planning Board approval and we'll do so. And there are no other comments from Monmouth County Planning Board that would alter this application as you're presenting it? There are none. Okay, thank you. Freehold Soils, we already have that approval. NJDOT, we do not yet have our signed access permit, but uh, I'll let Mr. Ray address that. He is here. Uh, we are very close. They have approved the design, though, so we're, we're at a place where we're, we're done with them. The, the DEP, LOI, and flood hazard area permits, we've already received. Howell Township, Howell Township, MUA, we've also received that. Again, this is New Jersey American Water Company's territory. And the Shade Tree Commission and Environmental Commission, we have gotten reviews from both of those agencies. I, I believe we're close, if, if not finished, with both of those agencies. Howell Township Police, we have not received any review from the Howell Township Police that I'm aware of. And uh, fire prevention, we have received a review. Uh, there, there may be some small item left in that, but we're also very close to being finished with that. I can, I can comment on that. The one comment that I can make um, in regards to the police department, because I was here for the for the first hearing is with this entrance and exit is there any signage on the entrance advising not to go southbound because we've had this situation in the past with Howell Commons over here uh, where we had some of our senior uh, residents with a similar island like this but then they installed a, a uh, curbing along the, the center which I know you can't do here but is there a signage um, in that entrance way, advising people not to turn left? Yes, there is. Okay, all right. Yes. Uh, I'm finished with my questions of Mr. Stevens. Does the board have any questions? Um, if it's okay with you, Mr. Walters, I'd like to take a five-minute break. All right, and then we'll come back to that. Okay. All right. We're going to take a couple of minutes break. The board will now recess. The planning board will now reconvene. I would just let the record show that we didn't lose anybody during the break from the board. No, all the all right. members are accounted for. All right. Does the board have any questions of Mr. Stevens? I do. Anyone? No. Chief? No. Do you want to bring that up? I want to hear the testimony from, from the villages. 
first. Okay. Before I do that. No questions you okay? of your engineer. You okay? you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I first have to open it up to the public. All right. Do you have other witnesses? I have one other witness. Yeah. All right. Um, at this time, I will open up the application for questions of the engineer. This is simply questions, not testimony. If anyone would like to ask questions, please step up to the podium. Okay, okay Ms. Dixel, if you just state and spell your name and give us your address. Barbara Dixel, 62A, Piazza Vittoria, Freehold, New Jersey. My last name is spelled D as in David, I-X-E-L as in Larry. Okay, and again, as the chairman stated, this is only for questions. You'll have an opportunity at the end to questions. testify. I'll ask questions. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is questions, Mrs. Dixel. Yes, I will. It's on. It's on? Yes. Okay. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Wooders, with reference to the berm and the villages, um, are you going to leave the existing vegetation that's there now from Wyckoff Mills Road past all the villagers' houses on the tree line side before you put in your 50-foot buffer and the berm? Yes, we're not going to be removing any trees that are off of our site. No, no. In other words, okay, in other words, you're, you're going to leave our, tr our tree line that's already there. Yes, ma'am, those trees okay. are on your property. Okay, now let me ask you another question. In speaking with Mr. Gazarowski, our, our attorney before our board dismissed everybody. Well, just to be clear, he was representing the homeowners association. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had discussed, and also I believe I did get a letter from your firm regarding a formal berm. Um, is it possible when you put the berm up to, and my request was to put in a line on top of the berm, gentlemen, of fully, fully grown, um, fully matured emerald green arborvitaes. Is, is that a possibility that will give a shield and will be, um, I guess it'll give a, a shield to the villages where a lot, a lot of... Um, Ms. Sherry, do you I, want to I chime suggest, in on that one? Did you make that available to the yes. planning board and um, yeah. professionals? Yes. Because yeah. we've already agreed to do, um, you know, give it to Sherry because we've agreed whatever she's going to recommend is that's what we're going to end up doing. Yes. So, so Ms. Dixel, if you provide that yeah, to, Sher that to Sherry Spiro, sure. that you know, there, there are no promises, but that will be considered in how they're going to design when they come back for final, but you will be able to see it fully designed at final sure. and see if and you approve or not. My only reason for asking this. No, you, you, your, your reason for asking is because you think it'll look nice. So we it, understand that. Not only that. that. Or fully matured, tall arborvitaes are very bushy and very tight and would provide some type of, like, a, a wall to shield the village's homes from, I guess, a lot of excess noise and light. And yeah, I, I will, but I just, with this, some, and then... Right, what, what we, we, Mrs. Dixel, the answer is yes. Okay, I'm but, at the but, bottom of the bird. No, but Mrs. Dixel, listen to me. Fine, here's, here it is. If you want to achieve that, you need to give it to us. Yes. So can you provide that? Uh, we'll right. mark it into evidence. Eileen will, we need to have Eileen take it, and she'll yes. mark it into evidence, copy it, and provide it to Sherry. Yeah. We'll watch it. Hand it to so. so. Thank you. Mr. Waters, underneath the berm, because that, that Mr. Gazarowski has said to me. This will be P23, Mr. Wooters. Thank you. First. Check it out. I will send everybody a copy tomorrow. Um, well, on, next week. I will send it tomorrow. On, at the foot of the berm, would you plant other small sh shrub evergreens to keep it looking neat? Whatever is recommended okay. as part of the negotiation process. Okay. Uh, now, now, with reference to your stormwater management, I've been in touch with Mr. Edward Sampson, Monmouth County Planning Board, for a long time. He's the director. Are you aware 
that on June 4th, 2015, the Monmouth County Planning Board sent SL Holmes a letter requesting very, a four page letter requesting very, very specific stormwater management, stormwater runoff, major site plans, and all kinds of other stuff, which I have for you and 12, 10 copies I will give the board. And the We're marking those right now. Okay, I'll, I'll give it out. With, okay. with, with reference to also the Manasquan River Greenway that they're very, very concerned about because are you aware that there may be a possibility because the villages and your site uh, are in the Manasquan River Greenway, as you know, we are in two watersheds. We are in the Manasquan River watershed south and the Matinakunk River watershed north. And um, my conversations with Mr. Is there a question here? Yes. Are you aware that the, the Manasquan yes. River Greenway could be very da badly damaged from you know, any excess um, disturbance? So um, I have a copy for you. If you like it, I don't want to call. Okay, okay, we're, we're copy, okay Mrs. Dixel, we're marking this into evidence, but let okay. me just confirm with Mr. Woder something that was previously stated, which is that you already have an application that's been filed with the Monmouth County Planning Board, correct? correct? We, we have the application filed. We right. have the letter that she's referring to. So they are in the process of dealing with that, and do you anticipate when you come back for final approval that that will have been resolved? Yes. Okay. Can you give, it, well, give this to the get, board, please? Yes. Because this letter goes back to 2015, and every well, time that's I that's Mrs. Dixon. Okay, but the fine. the it's date fine. of the letter is not really relevant. The fact of the matter is, they're required, if there's an approval, to well, obtain all outside agency oh, approvals. Mr. Woders has stated they're in the process of going through that approval okay. at the county right now, and when they come back for final, that they will have it. So I think the, his answer to your question is yes, he's aware of all of those things okay. and they're dealing with Monmouth County Planning Board to resolve. Well, I, was, I wasn't sure they were aware, yeah. but no, my conversation he said, he with said Mr. They, Samson. He's, he's, no, no, but Mrs. Dixel, that's not a question. That's testimony about what you did. Your question was, are they aware? And not only did they say yes, but they said they are resolving all issues in order to obtain an approval. But, you know, they'll have that in hand when they come back for final. So, you know, that's their task to, to obtain that between now and final if there's an approval. Uh, okay. With reference to your, the flood hazard verification letter you had gotten, had to get, um, you were aware at the time that there was a, a riprap problem that where the site, the edge of the pr plan um, encroached into the 150-foot repairing corridor, and, and I guess you're aware now that you guys have fixed it. And you're, not, you're no longer, you're no longer, um, they're no longer a problem. It's all been resolved. Can we get a yes on that? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's it's fixed. And and are you, okay now in your conversations with Chia, with Leah. Ching Hua Liang, which is a man, by the way, it's not a woman. Mr. Liang, um, he did say to me yesterday that, um, are you aware that the only thing you have to um, give Howell Township information is on your grading plan and your utility plan? Yes. Okay. Because that was what that was what he said to me yesterday. Well, he's and agreeing. We, 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 we know what they need. Yeah. We know what they need. Okay, no, I'm just... We know what they need. Okay, but I had a conversation with them yesterday, and he said, just make sure you Mrs. ask. Mrs. Dixel. Thank you very much. Yes, okay. With reference to the lighting, your outside lighting uh, on your site, is it possible to keep the candles low? I mean, we are a, a senior community. We're all growing up. I'm going to be 80. My husband's 82. A bunch of us are a lot older than that. And, um, you know, we're a little bit, we, you know, we're, it's, it's hard for us at night, and it's hard for us 
when it gets very bright out in shopping center lights are. So can you please keep your lights lower than what you're expecting to put on your site? Well, I think, Mr. Wilders, the testimony or agreement on that is that you'll be working with the police department and others and you'll reevaluate the, the lighting intensity? That's correct. And you'll take into account the request from Mrs. Dixon? Absolutely. We're very aware of the neighbors and so we'll take that into consideration. We, we all grow up. <laughs> we all grow up, Mr. Woods. It's hard sometimes. Okay, with your hours of operation, is it possible uh, for your hour being that we're a senior community uh, and there's a certain quality of life and dignity that we'd like to live, can you keep your hours from weekdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? No. Can you tell me why? I'm not prepared at this point in time, Plus, not knowing what businesses are going to be in there. We, the, the, the center will operate in accordance with local statutes and ordinances and the open times that are allowable under uh, local times and, well, and what the needs of the tenants are. But at this point in time, at this preliminary, not prepared to make any kind of promises as to operating time. Well, can you keep in mind that a lot of the local stores around here and some of the big box stores um, can, can you keep in mind that they kind of operate from like 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning to maybe 10, 10.30 at night, and, and that, that's fine? Is, is it possible for you guys to really consider that? We'll consider everything. But, you know... Um, okay, according to uh, Mr. Gazarowski, our lawyer, um, he had said question that uh, that this site is not it's not zoned for a shopping center it's zoned for retail stores I mean can, can, can you can you talk to that there and was a zoning amendment mrs. Dixel so the ordinance as it existed when this application had its previous life uh, has changed now but I would leave that um, Peter or, or Laura I, I agree with what Mr. Cachero said. The zoning is, has been amended to okay. include shopping centers as a permitted use. And this is a shopping center? Correct. Okay. Is, is it possible to keep disturbance down, not to put in a supermarket or a food store, just keep it retail stores? The applicant will consider the nature and extent and use of all the stores. And I know I have a copy of what your um, row of stores looks like, and the one I have has a path mark in it. So um, just because that would bring, uh, would you be aware that it would bring uh, a lot of um, transient traffic as well as maybe um, rodents and food droppings and garbage all over the place to keep it more refined? Well, shopping. he's answered the question, okay. Mrs. Dixel, that they're going to, they'll certainly consider that, but they're not at this time stipulating that, you know, they're going to restrict it from any permitted use on the site. Okay. Uh, 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 when, when, are you aware that when we did walk the site with your people from the village's board and I, I walked, my husband walked, that we, are you aware that we did not agree to anything? Well, we, we placed that on the record. We placed that on the record. Yeah. We, we stated affirmatively there was no agreement. There was no agreement. We I know. We, it's, it's on the record. Well, you can only testify to what, I, but I, it's not time to testify right. yet. Okay. So, but, oh, I'm just, you're just asking questions, but they agree that there was no agreement. Time being, um, that's about all I have to say for the time being. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else who would like yeah, to step? Sure please step forward. Be sworn. Well, we're just asking questions. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So that's her list. To provide your name and address. Uh, thank you. My name is Roy Coon. I'm at 150B Rue de la Horn, which happens to be the closest property 
to the new site that's being proposed here. Sir, can you just spell your last name for me? C O O N. This is questions now. Correct. Yes. My question is really because I can't make heads or tails of the prints without measurements on them. How close exactly is that fast food going to be to my back door? In measurements and feet, if I could get that out of you, I'd be really happy. Yeah, let's just do. You, do you and know? There, and, and maybe well, for the board, the second part of the well, question would be: Is there an ordinance saying how far they're allowed to put to a residential? Well, let's do. Let's start with this. Do you? Can you identify on the plan, Mr. Coon's property? Do you know what 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 lot it is? I do not. That's a question to me. Well, from what I can make out of that, if I may. What's your block on lot? Uh, well, let's, uh, did you receive it, Mr. Coons, did you receive a notice in the mail? I have my block on lot. Okay. Okay. It's the closest one, it's these. So I can tell you, just give me a second. Mr. Waters, it sounds like he was a noticed party, so it may be on your list on the yeah, plan. So we, we did not survey Mr. Coon's home, but we did take these locations off of our GIS database. So it, it's pretty accurate, but it's not like a survey dimension. Mm -hmm. So his pro, his home, the, the, the left rear corner of the home closest to our property is located 100 feet plus or minus off of our property line. And then the fast food restaurant. It's 92, actually. I measured it myself. Well, let's, Mr. Kuhn, let, let him finish answering Please, the thank question. You. And then the fast food restaurant is approximately 125 feet. So the answer to your question would be about 225 feet. Something like that. Thank you. And I hope that means I won't be hearing, do you want fries with that order all night long? Because that's my biggest concern. And, and just to the second part of your question, I think, Mr. Kuhn, I think there's a 50-foot buffer that's required between Mr. Kuhn's property line and any permitted development. Is that correct? That is correct. Part, part of that 225 feet would be our 50-foot wooded buffer, and then the village is looking at the aerial photograph, has their own wooded buffer in their mm -hmm. 100 feet as well. But in terms of requirements, Mr. Kuhn, there's a requirement that there be a 50-foot wooded buffer between your property line and where they can begin to do development on their lot? A wooded buffer. A wooded buffer. Because I marked, I walked that site with the surveyors when they were out there doing it. They were marking it three lines out. I was 92 feet from the 30 foot mark and then there was supposed to be another 30 foot back to their line where they were gonna build. And the surveyors told me that's where the trees were coming down. Well, I, I would say- It wasn't quite- that sure. Much, but I was wondering how far more mm -hmm. the restaurant would be. So I don't have to Mr. Waters, um, when we'll, I think they'll know more information about that also when they get the tenants. Yeah. When you come back for a final, can you just make sure that you, you look sort of look specifically at the distances to Mr. Kuhn's property so you'll be able to provide that? For all those houses right along mm -hmm. that area. Absolutely. Yeah. So when they have more information, they'll sure. deal with that specifically when they come back if there's an approval. Your, my biggest concern are the rats that the dumpsters are going to draw. Anyways. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My name is Jerry Dixel, 62 A Piazza Victoria. Uh, I'd like to find out if a 53 foot trailer can come out and swing, it, and swing out into the middle lane out of your shopping center. Uh, if, if you may, Mr. Chairman, uh, my next witness, Mr. Ray, is a traffic agree. expert, will be testifying as to some of those items. So Mr. Dixel may want to hold his question. Yes, I agree with that. It would be more appropriate testimony. Testimony. for the traffic engineer. Thank you. Would anyone else like to step forward and ask questions of this witness? Seeing none, I'll close that portion of the public, and you may proceed to your next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My next witness is John Ray. Yeah. 
Okay, Mr. Ray, you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. John Ray, R-E-A. And by whom are you employed, Mr. Ray? I'm a principal with McDonough and Ray Associates, Traffic Engineers, 1431 Lakewood Road, Manasquan, New Jersey. Were you we, are, we are very familiar with Mr. Ray and his qualifications. Uh, John, your license is current and there's no actions by the board. That is, that is correct, Chairman <clears throat> Nash. Um, we'll accept Mr. Ray as an expert traffic engineer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ray, did you have a reason to uh, prepare a traffic study dealing with this application and the flow of traffic at the site? We did. Would you please describe the results of your study for the board, especially as it relates to vehicle and big truck circulation at the site and also turning onto and Route 9 and also the Wyckoff jump handle? Okay, well, first let me describe the traffic study. It was done in accordance with the uh, requirements of the NJDOT. We have an access permit application that is pending. We actually have a conceptual approval from the NJDOT. So it's a fairly voluminous traffic study. It was revised in February of 2018. It's been submitted to the township and to the NJDOT. And as a result of that traffic study, we expect to get our NJDOT permit, uh, hopefully any day now, we do have a uh, conceptual approval. The results of the traffic study, and, and the traffic study included taking uh, PM peak street hour and Saturday peak hour traffic counts, which are the critical peak hours for analyzing a shopping center. We did those traffic counts most recently in early 2018, and I can tell you that um, we have another job in the area. I just did some additional traffic counts just this week, uh, Tuesday as a matter of fact, and the PM peak street hour counts are consistent with the counts that were used in the traffic study for this application. Uh, we analyzed the levels of service at a couple of off-site intersections in accordance with the NJDOT's criteria, and as a result of our traffic study, there is one piece of mitigation that we have to do in accordance with the NJDOT's access code. We have to shift one second of green time down at Casino Drive from the Route 9 approaches to the side street approach. Casino Drive on the east side, Burgerville Road on the west side. So there will be a shift of one second of green time in order to maintain a level of service C condition at that location and adhere to the NJDOT's uh, access code requirements. As far as the access to and from the site, the location of the driveway has been agreed to between the applicant and the NJDOT. We've had numerous meetings and discussions with the NJDOT. This is where they want the driveway to be located. The design of the driveway has been agreed to by the NJDOT. It will permit the WB50 tractor trailers to enter and exit the site safely and efficiently. So that design has been taken care of in, in concert with the NJDOT. The circulation patterns on the site, uh, we anticipate the trucks will enter, and the loading zone, of course, for the uh, main building in the shopping center is, is to the rear of the building. So the trucks will come in, they will circulate in a counterclockwise direction to the back of the building and continue looping counterclockwise and come right back out to the exit to Route 9. Uh, as we've discussed earlier uh, in the hearing, we do not have tenants not only for the main building but for the two pad sites, and it is our expectation that once we get tenants, they will take a look at what's been approved preliminarily, and if we need to make some changes to the site plan and figure out how their loading is going to work, we will be back in front of this board for final site plan approval with more details on who the tenants are, what their loading requirements are, hours of operation, and things of that nature. Um, last but not least, we do have 221 parking spaces, 211 are required by your code, so we're adequate on parking. Chairman Nash has asked us uh, to uh, stripe a couple of additional crosswalks between the parking lot and the main building. Since we have a surplus of 10 parking spaces, we can do that and still meet your code requirements for parking. And I think that about covers it. What about the joke handle to Mr. Ray, okay. can, can you just, you heard, I guess, what's going to be the question that's about to be asked regarding the uh, 
turning radii, right. radii for tractor trailers. Can you just address that? Yeah, the, the NJDOT has required us to put a 50-foot radius on the exit to Route 9, and, and it's been designed in accordance with what's required in order to get that WB-50 out onto Route 9 safely. Would you explain what a WDB-50 is? It's, it, it's a oh. tractor trailer with a 50 feet between the, the, the wheelbase of the first tire to the, the rear tire which is the largest truck that we're going to get on this site. It's a small neighborhood shopping center. We may not get any tractor trailer deliveries in here. It may all be box trucks, but we did design it for a WB-50. So just to be clear then, the DOT regulations don't require a design for a tractor trailer. It requires a design for the WB-50, which you're saying is like a box truck? No, no WB-50 oh, is a tractor, tractor trailer. trailer. All right, then, yeah. then the answer is yes, it is designed to accommodate a tractor trailer, that although you don't anticipate receiving them. Well, there may be. We don't know who the fast food, mm -hmm. you know, the fast food pads may have a WB-50 make deliveries, and that's why we need to come back at, at, at final yeah. and okay. provide those details to you and make any changes to the pad sites that may be required for the needs of a specific tenant. Okay. Mr. Ray, um, fire department. Have you met with... Well, you're going to have an opportunity to ask questions when he's done. Have you met with the chief of which, which chief, which station? Adelphia. Adelphia. Have you met with the Adelphia fire chief to... Uh, Mr. Nash, I have not. I don't know if Mr. Stevens has. Are we still awaiting comments from the fire department? I, I have not, Mr. Nash. We received some comments, and, and honestly, we're down to just a few small items. So All right, if the, a meeting is necessary, we'd be happy to do that. Yes, um, which, whichever, whichever individual wants to do it. Um, we, u we routinely get comments from the Fire Prevention Bureau, but the Fire Prevention Bureau isn't the, excuse the term, boots on the ground, all right? Um, we've been asking applicants to meet with the fire chief of the particular responding firehouse because they're the guys that are going to figure out if they can effectively operate within the site. And where my concern is, is on the rear of the building in that where, where you neck down on the northern portion of it, um, that you don't have enough distance to have a truck with an outrigger down, all right, and be able to get that vehicle effectively far enough away from the building. To, to fight the fire. So I, I would like when you come back for final to have that addressed. And, and, and I'm sorry, Chief, who, who is that? Adelphia. A, a, a Adelphia. 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 Adelphia Fire Company. Yeah. They're on Adelphia Road. Board have any questions for Mr. Ray? I, I just have one, and I, I know I brought it up the first time we saw this application. During your traffic study, um, did you, I don't know how, I'm not a traffic engineer, obviously. I like dirt. Missing a good profession. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many late nights out, Mr. Mayor. So, yeah. Tell, tell me about it. I, I just have major concerns about the White, turning onto Wyckoff Road and the, the traffic coming uh, Route 9 northbound. You know, you're at that light from Casino and they start speeding up, making a right into the shopping center. Or people that have on that right blinker, right. you know, are they going into the shopping center or are they making turn onto Wyckoff? Um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why the DOT wants the driveway exactly where we're showing it on the plan, so that we it's basically at the midpoint of the frontage of the property, which is a little bit over 800 feet. That's exactly where they want it, and for one of those reasons, they wanted to make sure that it wasn't on the formal decel lane that goes into Wyckoff Road. So it. It has been considered. A lot of consideration has been given to where the driveway should be located. And and do traffic studies, um, you know, obviously there's another proposed um, site right up the street here. Um, does that take that into account as well? Yeah, we did. There are actually three other projects on the corridor that were incorporated into the traffic study, including the traffic from those projects. I think they're up in Freehold Township. We've incorporated three, the, the three projects that were known up in Freehold at the time are incorporated. I'm talking the one adjacent to Woolies. Yeah. Uh, Kilt, adjacent Kilt, to, oh, the gas station? 
Correct. That, that's our traffic study too. Yes. Okay. We'll be back. If you think Mrs. Dixel is mad tonight, wait till she sees that traffic study. Jeez. I can tell you this does not even approach Mrs. Dixel being angry when you okay. saw tonight. <laughs> I know that. I was at the previous meeting. And I also recall that the first plans called for two entrances and exits. That's correct. That? And yes. it was a concern about the on-ramp onto Wyckoff, so that was You're absolutely, been eliminated. You're absolutely correct. So. And, and although, because we have a significant amount of frontage on, on Route 9, 800, over 800 feet, we right. qualified for two driveways, right. the DOT wouldn't let us have the second driveway. Right. That's correct. And that was a concern uh, with the board as well. Right. No. I just want to say something, Mr. Chairman. I think... Um, my guest. Uh, the fast food restaurants, I think that the deliveries will, will all be... Uh, tractor trailers because uh, usually they're served by Cisco US Food Service that's usually the business model that they do uh, so I think you do have to take into account some of the things that w they were talking about about the turn yeah, and, radius and, I mean, they don't be, deliver them in box let, trucks let, let's be realistic yes and, and Mr. Ray is acknowledging that the at this time if I'm understanding correctly the ingress is and egress is designed to accommodate a, fi uh, a 53. It, the, the trucks that you say see on the back that says trailer right. 53 feet, all right, which is what we call a WB50. Right. You're not going to get a WB67, and you're not going to get a tandem coming to this right. site. So um, I, I agree that the applicant has designed it reasonably, okay. and as he's represented, when he comes back for final, we'll know the tenants, all right? And then we can talk about that at that point. Okay. Yeah. If no, you, no. I, I want to let the board get done with their questions. And I guess add, add, just add the, the trucks to the circulation plan. They just show lines for the circulation plan. It'll actually show the turning radiuses. Okay. Will we know the tenants by if, if we get to final? We're not going to be able to come in for a final until we do identify the tenants. Okay. Because there's so many sure. items that are up in the air that need to be addressed at final. So until we identify the tenants, we won't, won't be back. And just to Mr. Tenant House's point, I'm not sure what sheet this is, but up on the screen, um, the left-hand side shows a WB50 vehicle. So that's this plan. And then moving this way is an SU30 <coughs> vehicle. What's that? The vehicle oh, movements. That, that's, I'm sorry, I just... Graphically, I'm used to seeing the box of the truck, and oh. seeing it in the corner. And okay. Graphically, it just, so like, it just helps. You helps like us. to see the truck on there. Well, <laughs> the lighting's what I know. So put the design vehicle on <laughs> that you use the auto turn to run. That's in your okay. packet, too, that I gave you. It's close to that. It, it, it is, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I think the only thing, as, as I look at this, the one thing that I keep being bothered by is if you're coming around on the westerly side, there's nothing stopping someone crossing the ingress to try to go to the southerly fast food location. And that's that just, what we talked about. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I think that's something I think we do need to address. Maybe some sort of, you know, yeah, I, but then I don't know how those people get back to that point. That's what Mr. Tannenhaus yeah. had brought up, yeah. and I had also <coughs> about either we put a barrier up or yeah. more what Mr. Tannenhaus brought up, which is an excellent idea, is closing that southern, I'm sorry, that western ingress completely. All right, It brings the, the, the vehicle conflict points much farther into the site. Yeah, I just keep looking at that, and I just want right. to make sure I mention it. And, and I think we've conveyed that to the applicant. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? No. no. Okay. At this point, I will now open it up to the public for asking questions of the applicant's witness. Please state your name and address. Sorry. Jerry Dixel, 62 A Piazza Victoria. If I was driving my 50, my truck coming out of that shopping center, how would I make go back to 9 South? You would make the right turn into the right lane. You would go up Wyckoff Road. You'd make the left on behind Woolies onto Strickland. 
for me to drive a 50-foot trailer, the swing couldn't make that left turn. Your mistake, because sir. Your mistake. Two, it's only two lanes, and you have to swing very wide. You can make the turn. Mr. Actually, Mr. Stevens has a, uh, an exhibit that shows how that can be made. It can be done. At the very end of the exhibits, yep. Laura, there is a, a turning template of that intersection. We did analyze. That was it right there. Go, back back one. one. That's it. So we, we did actually analyze that as well. Um, Mr. Stevens, when you ran that, I, I'm assuming Mr. Stevens prepared this? Yes. Yes. This when, was, when you ran that, that's not in the oversteer mode, is it? No, sir. So this is a wheelbase 50 vehicle making these movements, and, and it's not by any coincidence that all of the island geometry and everything else fits these movements, because that's how it's designed. It's designed to be able to do that. Do you know what the traffic is over there? I'll take you forever to make that turn with traffic coming down Strickland. In a rush hour, it'll be a disaster. Well, let's just, th there was a question in there. Uh, Mr. Ray, I guess there was a general question as to whether you looked at the overall traffic in the area, and, and if you did or didn't, is that relevant to the well, design? We did traffic counts at, at the intersection of 9 and Strickland. I've been out to the site on numerous occasions during peak hours, the latest of which was this afternoon. And certainly during the afternoon peak commuter hours, traffic is a little bit heavy there. But the Strickland Road approach generally clears on every cycle. And it doesn't take two cycles to get through. So I've been doing traffic work in Monmouth County for 35 years. That intersection has basically operated the same way for the last 35 years. Did you do it in a rush hour? Yes. People in the village will never be able to get out. I respectfully disagree. You don't live there. I saw people coming out of the villages today at 5 o'clock. They got out onto Wyckoff Road. Is there anyone else who would like to ask questions? Ms. Dixel? Gentlemen. Questions? Yes, I am. With reference to this vehicle circulation plan, um, are you aware that when we did have a licensed traffic engineer. His name was Alexander Latornia, licensed traffic engineer, state of New Jersey. When you said we. The, the, the villages had, we had hired him in the beginning, and then. For, for this application? Yeah. The, the Homeowners first, Association the hired time. him. Not now, the first time. No, I'm saying, but that was the Homeowners Association yes, who hired him? Right, okay. First, yeah. and, and, and so are you aware that I, he had me, Call every fire company in Howell, get the wheelbase of every fire truck in Howell, and get the turning radius of every fire truck in Howell, including calling the manufacturers. And he concluded. Well, no, you asked if they were aware of that. Are you aware of what it is? <laughs> no, I'm not aware of any of that. Okay. I'm sure. okay. Well, um, um, are you aware that these fire trucks? are so big with the pumper, with the ladders, with, that they can't get on this site with the with this vehicle circulation plan that goes only one way and one way only around and get on and off the property we're not, we're not aware right of fire. We're not aware of well, are you, are you not aware of it or you disagree with it? Uh, probably both. Well, Mr. Ray, right. uh, well, why don't you answer? I think Mr. Stevens indicated uh, he's going to meet with the chief of the Adelphia Fire Department, and we're going to comply with whatever the fire department requires us to do to make sure their trucks can circulate within the site. And, and with reference to the last hearing we had, okay. Um, There's um, no reference to the last hearing. Um, okay. So this is what, a hearing um, anew. Okay, well, okay, then. Um, Mr. They, Stevens, when after you meet for the next meeting, um, I would like you to prepare a turning, uh, run the auto turn through the site to show the largest wheelbase vehicle that the, the uh, fire department has uh, circulating through the site. We, we will do that, Mr. Nash. I will meet with your, with your fire director as requested, and we will prepare that drawing. I believe we already have, honestly. If a wheelbase 50 vehicle can get through there, a fire truck can get through there. I understand but I, that. I will Confirm the dimensions. Well, actually, auto turn is a great thing now, and that is what these these 
plans are generated from, we can actually model the exact trucks that he has. Mm -hmm. and run the site. We will do that. Yes, thank you. I, I Chief, you, you, you mentioned, I'm sorry, you mentioned right. just Adelphia, but uh, if there was a large fire, there'd be other responding. Uh, Squonkum serves them all, so I was told. Th no, there'll be other, there'll be other. That's, there'll that's be, not, that's not true, Mr. Dixel. Squonkum doesn't, doesn't cover it. If anything, Freewood Acres would, would provide mutual aid to Adelphia in that area as Correct. a former Adelphia fireman. Correct. Right? So <laughs> we just got to make sure, like, right. other agency, right. other, and, other and, and also Mrs. Department. Dixel may not realize this, but when Surrey Downs was built, Adelphia bought a smaller truck in order to navigate through those smaller cul-de-sacs in Surrey Downs. So they have the capability of getting into tight spots. Now, we're not going to obviously approve something that only one truck can get through. I get it. But if a wheelbase 50 can, can circulate through there, their fire trucks can circulate there as well. Well, the technology nowadays in these newer fire trucks, uh, it's it's amazing the turning radius. Uh, yeah, are you really yeah. are you really understand that if there is a severe fire and they have to get on and a number well, of this, trucks the, have to come, and they have Mr. To Chairman, back up, this is not a question. We're shutting down Route Nine. I can tell you that much. That back up the, and turn these around. These are these are Mrs. Yeah, Dixon. These are not questions. Okay. You're going to have an opportunity okay. to say this, but the answer to the question was. <laughs> they believe that the WB-50 would allow the fire trucks, but they are also going to meet with the relevant uh, fire district representatives to, to make sure that there's access. So that's another thing that they're going to be coming back to, to provide future testimony on if there's a preliminary approval, and you'll have another opportunity to look at it and ask questions. Is it possible? I, I was in touch with Richard Doobie. Bureau of Major Access Permits, NJDOT. I've been in touch many times. He's now since retired. Is it possible for me to be allowed to give out this? Well, hold on. I just want to make you. Thing, okay, I just have a question. You called him recently with regard to this? He's retired now. Well, I, I, that's what I'm asking. Did you call someone dated. in the DOT or did you call someone who's retired? 15, 2018. Was he in the DOT? Yes. Okay. May I give this what is it? report out that I prepared according to the conditions on this site that would be dangerous to... Well, is there a question associated with that? Yes. It, it, well, yes, my, my, I, think what, I think what you can do is ask your questions, and then if you want to introduce this, it's, the better time is when you're coming up to give your testimony, and you can talk about what's in it. Is, is this something that was prepared... By Mr. Doobie? No, it she said she me. prepared it herself. I did it on my computer. So I, I think the yeah. time for that is during her direct testimony. I, I agree with you, Mr. Okay. Then, okay, then, uh, then uh, are you aware of Chapter 7, Chapter 47, Title 16, Number 6? Of, of what in particular? NJ, uh, the, the Administrative Code. State of New Jersey. Uh, I, I can't cite it off the top of my head. Oh, I, okay. Are you, aware, are you aware that it says no access point shall be located along an acceleration, deceleration, or exclusive right turn or left turn lane where the lane is at its full width? Yes, and that's not the case where our driveway is located. When you come out, or don't you understand it's when you come out of that shopping center it's not onto Whitecourt Road? They, they can't. They can't do it. And that, well, that's, no, that's well, the answer first, to the first question. Of all, first of all, the DOT has the ability to waiver that no access requirement. The applicant is complying with the DOT direction of where to place their ingress and egress. Okay? DOT is the agency that has jurisdiction over the ingress and egress. So really, the applicant is testified. He's doing what they told them to do. All right? I can you that 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 regulation, if you read that regulation, it can be waived by the DOT, which is exactly what they determine that they want to do. Can is that is that Mr. Ray, well, is actually, that beyond the um, the limit of no access? No, it, it, it's beyond the, the width of the uh, full the full width of the deceleration lane into Wyckoff Road. So actually where our driveway is located is to a travel lane. But you're correct, Chairman Nash, the DOT could waive that uh, even if we were on a decel lane, but we're not. We're not on the decel lane. Right. Uh, can can you give can you give consideration to the village's entrance, which wasn't done last time? Your cars are going to come out, and you're saying they're going down Wyckoff Mills Road. 
we can't get out of the villages now. Can, and, and last time they poo pooed the villages' entrance. Well, it, Mrs. Please, Dixel, that's testimony again. So, ca can you please give consideration to the villages' entrance? And can you understand that we have 671 houses and a thousand people? Well, he's it. trying to answer the question now. I'm trying to answer the question, and quite frankly, I think you're overstating the difficulty of getting out of the villages. Oh, I've sat there. and watched it during peak hours. And Lived there for 27 Mrs. Years. Dixel, okay, I'm trying to you answer. have to let him answer the question, or else this process is not going to work. Did Mr. Ray? Okay. Oh, are, I thought I... I, I and I, are, are you aware that there's a four-ton weight limit sign? At, uh, at the entrance of the villages, and there's also a four-ton weight limit sign on County Road 524 and Wyckoff Mills Road? I'm not aware of that, but I don't see the relevance. Well, um... Well, he answered the question. He's not aware. I, but can you also understand that when the cars come down out of the shopping center down Wyckoff Mills Road, they're either going straight down Wyckoff, and then they have to make... Are you... Un making a left turn on Strickland, but do you, do you know that the traffic from County Road 524 coming down Wyckoff Mills Road to go to Route 9 is now a shortcut? And, and, and are you aware of the well, fact? Well, let's stop there. Are you I, aware I, of that? I wouldn't call it a shortcut, but having lived in either Howell or Freehold Township for 15 years myself, I've used that road many times. Okay, and are you aware that the white, the, the Rutgers farm is going to have 400 feet taken off the farm? Absolutely. And they're going to close Spyglass, and, and, and that it's going to become a, a, a county road going through Adelphia Greens to 9, and then uh, hopefully the, the, the insane traffic will stop. But can you please give some consideration to the traffic that you're well, going to put from that Mrs. shopping Dixel. center down Mrs. White Mrs. Court? Dixel. So are you aware of, of the statement? Are those true statements as far as you know, Mrs. Mr. Wright? Mrs. Dixel is correct. The, uh, the, the project to uh, straighten out Halls Mill Road and run that road through the Rutgers property, through Adelphia Greens, out to the Jug Handle on Route 9 south of Adelphia Road, that's going to happen pretty soon. And does that impact your well, plan take at some all? Yeah, I think that'll take some traffic mm -hmm. off of Wyckoff Road and eliminate some of the backups, at during, particularly during the afternoon peak hour where people are now using Wyckoff Road and Strickland Road to get back right. to the south right. on Route 9. Right. The new road through the Rutgers property out to the drug handle will alleviate that. Okay. Mrs. Dixel, any more questions? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you ADA compliant? I haven't heard anything about that. That would probably be a question for Mr. Stevens. Well, how many parking spots do you have for ADA? Seven or eight, Bill, and I, I believe that I is I believe compliant. it was testified that there were eight. Yeah. Eight. Eight. What, what I can also is? tell you, Mrs. Dixel, it's not an option. They're going to have to be ADA, ADA no, compliant. Can you tell me what the state requirement is for that shopping center? Mr. Stevens, can I? What, whatever the requirement whatever is, the requirement we've is, met we'll it. Meet it. It's been met. Okay, and one another question. Um, is it possible that you would be aware that there's the whole site is kind of undersized and that there may be, are you aware that there may be not enough room in the back of these loading docks for these big trailers and God forbid a fire truck or anything else? How do you plan to address all well, this? Well, let's we just, let, can, can we just start from the very, she said, you said the lot is undersized. I don't think that's the case under our ordinance. Um, no, it's council? not undersized. Right, okay. I disagree with that. All right, so how do you plan to address the tight spots and the tight space and working space and getting on and off and with these trucks and trailers and whatever, getting on and off and loading and unloading on these loading docks. Site has been designed to accommodate that. Mr. Stevens has uh, done the truck turning radius templates. It shows that a WB-50 tractor trailer can circulate throughout the site. And so that's been accounted for in the design. Um, and okay. I, I'm going to ask you if you know, where, are you aware that when this site, or close to this site, was Ashley Furniture, or going to be Ashley Furniture, that the DOT didn't give them ingress or egress because there was no 
possible safe ingress or egress to get on and off the site? How relevant at all what, well, what transpired in the prior approval, which is no longer applicable to this site? They didn't also because of the loading docks. Well, we don't have those documents, and I, I agree with, with Mr. Woters because this applicant has to apply and has applied to the DOT. So it doesn't matter what they said for, for Ashley Furniture. It matters what the DOT determines for this application. All right, but just can I ask you one more time, please give the village's entrance and the village's residents some respect with all the traffic you're going to get coming out of that shopping center down past our entrance. We don't get in and out now. God help us when this thing is built. Can, can you give us at least, please try to give us some respect with, with, with what you're going, the traffic you're going to put down this road. Is there anyone else who would like to ask questions of this witness? Please come up, state your name and address. Uh, my name is Reeve Apgar, 18B Zacherton Road, the Villages. Okay, can you just spell your last name for us, sir? A-P-G-A-R. Okay, go ahead. All right, my question is regarding the size of the parking spaces that you're basing your 221 parking spaces. Correct. Nine feet wide by 19 feet deep. That's a standard size. I believe that meets the township ordinance. We're not and requesting. If, if you put in crosswalks to parking that's parallel to the stores, how many parking spaces is that going to take out? Um... Not 10. We have 10 more spaces than we need, so it might be a couple, but it won't be 10. How many, how many crosswalk lanes do you propose? Well, we already have two. I think uh, we might add an, an additional one or two crosswalks. So you already, uh, you already allowed for two? Yes. All right, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Who would like to ask questions? Things now we'll wait until they like, talk about it. Should I wait? Should I give out this? These stuff? are things we already marked. Should I give out the stuff about the... Wait, wait till you testify. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, thank I'm going to close the public portion thank you very much. for this witness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you, John. All right, at this point... I will open up the meeting for testimony. Anyone, you want to say, anyone who wants We're opening to up for speak on this application, please come up, be sworn. Okay, ma'am, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. My name is Diane. My name is Diane Galante, G-A-L-A-N-T-E. I'm a resident of the Villages, and my house is right by that yellow line. What's your address? 146 C Parkway Drive, so I'm going to be walking to your stores. I feel I'm in great hands with all of you, the applicant and I, and what I'd like to do is address the berms and the lighting. Could the berms be higher? Could the trees be wider? Could the, could the lighting be dimmer? Could all those things happen? Well, we've already the, those the, well the lighting lighting. I could I could say that we've already discussed with the applicant yeah. that they are going to. Uh, there's a uh, organization, IES. Do you want to explain what the IES organization is about and what guidance they're going to provide for the parking lot illumination levels? So, so it's an organization that that provides just that guidance to what lighting levels should be. Uh, tip, typically, well, in my just, m Mr. Chair, just from a procedural standpoint, are we, are we reopening it to questions? Of no. The um, oh, okay. got it. I, I, no, I, actually, I just want to address the board with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, yeah, I don't I, think it was a specific okay, question. Um, it was just what, sort what, of what I would like. What I would like to say is, <laughs> you've brought you've brought up issues that the board has asked the applicant to look at. Mr. Tannenhaus did uh, uh, brought up about the lighting. All right. We've asked our tr certified tree expert because there is a concern that there is not sufficient uh, screening or separation. Yes. All right. So the board is aware of that, mm -hmm. and we've asked the applicant. Right. The applicant has agreed to work yes. with the board. 
So I, th I believe your concerns are being addressed. And one uh, other question, the noise levels. Are there noise level uh, uh, surveys that were taken? There is an ordinance. We, we have an ordinance, and there's also state regulations. So they don't have a choice. They have to comply with those ordinances and state regulations. And this board doesn't have an ability to, to modify that. Okay, so will those trees and that berm and that buffering wall um, prevent the sound from ruining? Well, nine? these are, this is the time for testimony, but I think what you heard from the board is they're redesigning that. So if there is an approval, they will be coming back for a final with a revised plan. And certainly once we see that, mm -hmm. that would be an opportunity for you to ask that question if there's an approval tonight at final to make sure that there's adequate, you know, buffering. But okay. they don't have the final plan for that right now. Okay. All right, well, that's all I had to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Ma'am, I have a question for you, if I may. Yes. Uh, you, you came up here and you initially stated that you would be walking over to it. Is that Probably. correct? How would you be doing so? Well, I'd have to exit the villages on, um, on Wyckoff. I'd have to make a, a left. And then I'd have to walk onto the dirt to get there, wouldn't I? That'd be a, right. Well, right. Right. is that how I'd get there? Right, that's that, that, that's, that's, that's correct. Yes, that's, that's correct. one of our get there. That's okay, one of our so concerns. That would be a concern so, to me that there would be something there that I could. So walk that on. that's what the board has brought up, and I believe the yes. deputy mayor and Mr. Nicastro yes. both expressed to our engineer that <clears throat> we felt that we should go back and look at. We can't ask the applicant to build sidewalk off his property, mm -hmm. but to see if the town has programmed the sidewalk so you don't have to walk on the dirt that's, from the villages. That's one of my concerns. Well, we've, we were addressing that. Thank you. Well, I thank you all. I feel I'm in very good hands. Thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Okay, this time I have to swear you in, sir. I know I was up here a little while ago, but I would just like to read oh, No, I need to swear you in this time. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And just for the record, you have to give us your name and address again. Uh, Roy Kuhn, C-O-O-N. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Coons. In the villages. You can lift that mic a little, so there you go. All right. And I would just want to address the board by saying that my concerns were the defense I was told it was 10 foot. I heard tonight six foot. Um, the buffer is the big concern because my property is the closest to Jason property. I'm really concerned about the noise and the rats that those dumpsters from the fast food are going to generate. I, we know we're going to get them in our yards, and we never had any yet, even though they might be in those woods right now. So that, I just want to make you guys concerned. that We're all concerned, very concerned about that. I don't begrudge anybody trying to earn a buck by developing this property, even though I don't think another empty strip mall is going to be attractive because we have so many of them now that are empty. And I just wanted to reiterate that, and thank you very much for listening to me. Would anyone else like to Ms. Dixon? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, just state your name again. Barbara Dixel, D as in David, I, X, E, L as in Larry. Okay, go ahead, Mrs. Thank Dixel. You. Uh, with reference to what this gentleman just said about the um, garbage, um, I hope you're going to uh, provide all the garbage receptacles surrounded, covered with landscaping, fencing, and closed. Can can you can you elaborate on that? Well, this is you, this is your testimony. Okay. You asked your questions before, well, I'm asking so this is your time okay. to. I, I would like to, I would like to give a copy of the to the board of okay. what I had uh, requested on the fire trucks and the in in and out of the, on the site. This is a this is a statement you yes, wrote I yourself. Be, yes. Okay. Yes. Mr. Waters, are you objecting to this on no. any grounds? No. Okay. So we're going to mark this. At Mrs. Dixel? Yes. Is this the same as this, or is this something different? 
That's all. That's NJ. No, no, no. I'm asking you, is that the same as this? Yeah, it's all related to that. Is this the exact same no. document as this? No. Okay. So what are we up to? Okay, so P26 will be your June 15, 2018 memo to Richard uh, Dewey, Bureau of Major Access Permits, NJDOT. And P27 appears to be a courtesy copy of what appears to be rules from Title 16 with uh, personal notes from Mrs. Dixel. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I think these are all copies. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mrs. Dixel. All right, I'm going to read this. Today, there are very little 30 or 50 foot trucks. Most trucks, trailer trucks, stay on the road are 53 feet and bigger. Um, uh, there, there, number one on my list here, there is no way that two vehicles can be on this circulation path at the same time. Um, I, I had to, again, I had said this before, I had to get the turning radius of every fire truck, of every firehouse in Howell. There is no possible way for any fire truck whatsoever to get on this site properly, properly, be able to turn around, be able to fight a fire or rescue people and or get off the site properly and safely without hitting a car or building or a person. The applicant is putting 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. Jerry and I met with licensed Monmouth County traffic engineers who gave us uh, NJ 40, NJAC 47 title 16 number six that clearly states that no access point shall be located along an acceleration, deceleration, or exclusive right turn lane or left turn lane when the lane is at its full width. And this is a letter that I sent to Mr. Doobie. No, Mr. Doobie, the, the NJDOT and your major access department cannot give this applicant a permit. The right turn lane out of this site is an exclusive lane at its full width it leads to a right turn onto Wyckoff Mills Road toward the village's entrance on Wyckoff Mills Road and Strickland Road. There is a four-ton weight limit sign at the entrance of the villages on Wyckoff Mills Road um, going to uh, 524 Elton Adelphia Road. There is a four-ton weight limit sign at the corner of County Road 524, Wyckoff Mills Road. There can be no large trucks on Wyckoff, on Wyckoff. Any truck coming out of the site onto Route 9 North and wanting to go down Wyckoff uh, to corner of Strickland Road making a left turn going to Route 9 North or South cannot do it because no large truck or trailer can, can clear the curbs and the, traffic, and the traffic on that corner of Woolies Fish Market and the Exxon gas station. My husband, my husband drove large trucks doing food, doing food service for 25 years. He will tell you it is not possible to get a truck in or out of the site safely. If a truck tries to exit the site, that truck absolutely must pull the cab of the truck directly into the middle lane on Route 9 North, then turn the cab to the right um, in, in order to get the back of the truck off the, out of the site and then move over to the right or stay, stay in the middle lane 
to drive down Route 9 North. Mr. Doobie, you are looking at very many fatal accidents happening when vehicles leaving, leaving down Route 9 North have to suddenly slam on the brakes in order not to hit the, not to hit these exiting trucks or trailers or slam on, slam into, slam into a truck roadside because the vehicles could not stop in time. There will be many fatal accidents and serious injuries. The circulation path does not allow enough room for deliveries to load or offload uh, merchandise in back of the stores uh, on the loading docks. The site is for 15 stores and two fast food restaurants, and I am not sure they will be able to be compliant. That's what I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Dixel. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come up and speak on this application? And, and the only other thing I have to say is, again, I, I am saying and stating that the applicant is putting the village's residents in danger by directing traffic out of the site down Wyckoff Mills Road. We don't get out of this site now. With the site, with the traffic coming down County Road 524 to avoid Halls Mill Road, because this is the shortcut, we don't get in or out now, barely. In the afternoon, late afternoon and evening, when the rush hour is, try it. Any of you, it's lunacy. It's impossible. So the applicant, take into consideration, gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, sorry, sorry, Deputy Mayor, that take into consideration <laughs> Our lives are being put in danger. We're all seniors. We're all elderly. You, you, you don't move around so fast when you're in your 80s and 90s, and you have to drive in and out of something. So take this into consideration and have this applicant revise his plans, maybe, or give us a little bit more respect. We have reached our senior years. We are your parents, your grandparents, and your great-grandparents. Allow us the right to live in our homes in dignity, and with a quality of life and live out our final senior years in our homes with dignity. All I ask, it's not a lot to ask. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public portion. Councillor, would you like to summarize? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is an application for preliminary site plan approval and woodlands management plan for this site for a uh, shopping center with pads. We've made a number of um, points tonight uh, that the board is interested in. Uh, we will address those when we come in for final once the tenants have been identified. Um, I have nothing else to add at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, madam. Do I have a motion? So, Mr. Chair, I just want to be clear, though, in terms of the relief that was initially asked for, the only relief they wound up asking for tonight was the waiver on the Woodlands Management to pay the fee rather than the trees. The rest of the waiver requests are involved in things that they are reworking for final. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kachara. Do I have a motion? SP 1013. I'm going to make the motion to approve the preliminary with the stipulations noted that when you come back for final, these issues will be addressed for mm -hmm. SP 103113. 1013. I'll second. You're not eligible, Brian. Oh, sorry. The beginning. Sorry. Never mind. Have it. I will second. Thank you, Chief. Oh. Yes, please. Mr. Dorado? No. Mr. Husser? Yes. Chief Kudrick? Yes. 
Mr. Nicastro. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Seaman. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell. Yes. Chairman Nash. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Um, next item is master plan update. We, we had no meeting this month. I don't know if we're having one. Who do we, who do we ask and get permission to have a meeting? To, or what, what we're to work on? Is that a council question or is that For the ability to have a meeting? You're the master plan subcommittee chairman. You can, and there's not a quorum, so you can call the meeting if you wish. Uh, don't, we don't have any direction. In terms of the budget, you know, that's been allocated, yes. Um, I would say communicate with the township manager to, to see what the budget is and to be able to coordinate, you know, moving forward. Okay, I will carry it till uh, the next meeting to have that discussion. And I did speak to you privately or offline, Brian, that in fact we're working on the land use element plan. Land use? For, uh, and okay. that is being worked on as we speak. Okay. At which point then you'll have more to work with. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any reason to go into executive session? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, with that being said, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So I'm so I'm I'm Mr. Second. Castro, Third. seconded by Mr. Tannenhouse. Fine. Third All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 All opposed? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.